dear students welcome back in the previous session we have discussed about um, pest planus or pronator foot or flat foot now in this session we are going to discuss about pest cavus or supinated foot and this one is also called as cavo varus this cavo varus is described as a high arched foot it is described as high arched foot both in weight bearing or non weight bearing positions reports have noted approximately 60% of individuals have an arch height considered as normal and 20% will have low arch that is flat foot and 20% have a high arch that is pescavus normally in the pescavus the high medial longitudinal arch is associated with the noticeable calcaneus inversion noticeable calcaneal inversion this inverted calcaneus allows the medial heel pad to be observed when the patient stands with the foot straight ahead and has been referred to as a peak abu sign okay the subtalar and the transverse tarsal joints are excessively pronated which prohibits these joints from participating in shock absorption or in adapting to uneven terrains because uh, because in extreme supination these uh, bones or the joints become uh, a rigid liver becomes a rigid liver that is in uh, it is in locked position uh, in uh, extreme supination uh, what are what are the joints uh, or locked in that position is subtalar joint talonavicular joints as well as the transverse tarsal joints because uh, of this rigidness these joints will not participate in shock shock absorption um or even in adapting to uneven terrains also okay so because of this hind foot supination the hind foot uh, supination what is going to happen here with which causes an associated lateral rotation of the uh, leg is going to takes place okay because of this lateral rotation on the leg make in turn affect the knee joint structures okay and the inability to absorb additional limb rotations across the hind foot put a strain on the ankle joint structures especially the lateral collateral ligaments because this lateral rotation on the stress leads to lateral weight shift leading to recurrent ankle sprains peroneal tendon pathology and um, metatarsalgia and fifth metatarsal stress fractures have been attributed to the lateral shift uh, to the lateral weight shift okay and this pescavus deformity can be the result of charcot marie to disease um uh, this is due to some idiopathic in nature idiopathic means the reason is unknown okay so this is the thing happened uh, uh, in the supinated foot and uh, so what happened actually means uh, because uh, it is putting some stress on the lateral collateral ligaments and also some other passive structures called the plantar aponeurosis uh, becomes slack and for a over time it is going to shorten so adaptively it becomes shorten that means uh, um normally it has to support like this because of increased arch this uh, plantar aponeurosis become loose that means slack for a over time the length of this plantar aponeurosis is going to decrease okay and uh, the tarsal metatarsal uh, must undergo pronation twist to maintain appropriate weight bearing of the forefoot this may result in uh, chronic plantar flexion of the first way okay there is not 
uh, an effective conservative intervention for a cavus foot as there is for a flexible flat foot so for flexible flat foot we can uh, provide some conservative treatment but uh, here in the cavus we can't give uh, we can't have an effective conservative intervention for this kind of foot okay so and um, the soft tissue and muscle imbalances are thought to be the driving forces behind the pescavus deformity and the weaknesses of the intrinsic musculature mainly lumbricals and intrashay con contribute to cavus deformity okay so these intrinsic muscles normally cause metatarsophalangeal flexion okay and um, ip extension so weakness of this intrinsic muscles allows the extrinsic flexors and extensors to have a dominant action okay the long flexors cause flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint instead of extension and um, and cause hyperextension at the metatarsophalangeal joints so this prolonged unopposed flexion at the proximal interphalangeal and distal interphalangeal joints will result in retrograde buckling of the metatarsophalangeal joint and further flexion of the metatarsal bones ultimately this deformity can lead to contractures that means all these uh, are going to change which is not seen in uh, uh normal structure okay so such kind of increased pressure at the metatarsal head leads to pain and which leads to metatarsalgia and uh, there we can see some imbalance in the agonist and antagonistic relationship between the two groups of muscles that is anterior tibialis peroneus longus and peroneus brevis and posterior tibialis can also contribute to the deformities associated with pescavus okay so this deformity initially may be flexible during the early stages of this condition but over time uh, it becomes uh, progressively more rigid so this is about the supinated foot or pescavus or high arched foot or uh, cavo varus thank you